Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Karano and today we're talking about DMZ. Now, I know you've played Warzone 2.0 and I know some of you haven't given DMZ a chance. So I wanted to make this video talking about DMZ and why you should try it out. As in the previous video talking about Warzone, I shared that Warzone isn't running well at all. And there are many more things that are wrong with it than there are good. DMZ on the other hand, DMZ is running smooth and it gives you something that Warzone can't. And that's just the thrill of playing the game. Well, here's how to get started in DMZ and what you need to know. Now, if you hopped into DMZ once and all you did was kill AI and never touched it again, really, that's on you. Play the game the way it's meant to be played. DMZ gives you missions to complete with the possibility of losing what you went in with. Now, in truth, the only things you're really going to lose are a backpack if it's a medium or large and a vest if it holds two or three plates and the insured weapon slot, not the gun. So you don't necessarily lose your customized gun, you lose the ability to ensure a gun that you built. So you can't build another gun, you're going to have to use contraband weapons. You'll be able to unlock two more insured slots for guns that you built when you complete level 3 tier missions for every faction. Now know that this game requires a team or at least wants you to play as a team because it's pretty brutal. Like I didn't expect DMZ to be this brutal sometimes and it is. You can play up to like 45 minutes and you die at extraction because almost every single team decides to wait till the end it doesn't always happen but when it does it gets crazy and it's a lot of fun you have items like a tactical and lethal to bring in as well as a field upgrade so you should always bring those in the game is pretty self-explanatory in terms of what to do but here are some things that may help you when you get started so let's talk about missions real fast now there's three missions that you can choose from each one being from a faction or you can choose all three from one faction it just depends on you now you can complete every mission in one deployment if you do it fast enough because again the time given to you is about 45 minutes it may be actually a little longer than that so there really is no need to rush in dmz just it's better to survive and play it smart most of the time now there's going to be missions that make you go all over the map so you don't necessarily need to explore and do all kinds of things the first time you deploy so just take your time and do what you need to do for instance you're going to see that there's a weapons case that you can get you don't need to get that right now. Don't ignore what you have to do to do what you want to do. You'll get to that eventually. And when you get into the game, you're going to see these things called strongholds. Now, strongholds, the way to access them is that you're going to kill enemies around the stronghold who are normally buffed. So you're going to see as you shoot them, they're going to have two plates, which shows as blue. Now, these enemies are a little stronger. They're going to throw more grenades than the regular AI. But once you start killing them, they're most likely going to drop a blue key card at some point. Once you grab that, you're going to go into the stronghold. You'll know it's a stronghold because one, the map shows you when you bring up the map and you're going to see flags on top of the building. Now, when you go in there, there's some really good loot. There's great points of interest in this game that you're going to want to check out that have really high tier loot. So it's worth going in there. One thing I do want to let you know is that when you're in a stronghold, it's more than likely the enemies are not going to stop coming. So get what you need and get out, which brings me to my next point and a very important one don't stay in one place just keep moving dmz is really nice in the fact that it makes you want to run and gun and it's really cool because you can in fact that actually helps you because the moment that you get caught in one corner fighting all kinds of ai or you're just not getting to where you want to get to within the building because ai just keep coming it's best to just leave one you're going to get swarmed two you're going to figure out that oh my gosh i need more ammo and three another team is on their way to kill you along with anything there and they're going to get the loot that you were working so hard to get Talking about AI real quick, they are pretty cracked. Sometimes you're not going to be able to tell whether it's a PMC or an AI. Now, I say PMC, that's just other players. A cool little hint is PMC, when you do a radar or you mark somebody on the little mini map, it's going to show up as a solid dot. Now, AI are actually, you'll see they're, they're hollow, and that'll help you actually a lot when your team is fighting AI or PMCs because you're going to be able to tell who's who. Vehicles are a big deal in this game, so you're going to want to use one. There's a vehicle called an LVT. It's about 18,000, I believe. So loot up, sell the items that you need to sell and get that one. It's going to help you, especially when it comes to extraction. That vehicle is OP. There are other vehicles within the game, for instance, like the Honda, which I call it Honda. It looks like one and you get an electric truck, too. It kind of looks like a Hummer, but that one's really fast. It's a good one to use. So vehicles are a big part in DMZ. Trust me, you're going to want to use them, especially when it gets to the last extraction. You're going to need a vehicle, especially for far away. The vehicles, you should know that if you stop at a gas station, you're going to be able to repair it. So never skip one if you're getting low on fuel and your vehicle's damaged. Just know that you're going to have to clear it out. Before I continue, 
If you're enjoying the video, hit that like button for me and smack that subscribe button while you're at it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you watching. Get back to it. The one thing I always keep in mind is don't get greedy. Get what you need, get it done and leave. You're going to be able to come back all the time. There's plenty of tasks again that are going to take you all over the place and make you do all kinds of things. So there's no rush to just try and get everything done in one go and be a team player. You can always come back in and try again, but be reasonable too. Don't be that guy that ditches your team just because you have an item or you completed a task that you need to get out all of a sudden. Chances are it's because you have a team with you that you got that done. So it wouldn't hurt to complete a task for them as well. Let's talk about other PMCs. Now things in DMZ can get real fun when you're finding them. So it can be punishing when you're extracting. Let's say you call a flare up and the helicopter's on their way. Everybody sees it. And now you have three other teams that are rushing to the same spot to get out. Everyone's going to fight to get that helicopter. But let's say that you run into one out just doing your mission. If you kill someone, you can always take their dog tag, which is located on like the left side of looting their inventory. Now, it's kind of hard to see, but it's going to be there. One thing that I did notice, and I'm wondering if this is a ranking system. It's just I haven't seen anything else besides this is the dog tag is going to say like a bronze player. Now, I haven't seen silver or gold. But I'm assuming that that's a ranking system within DMZ. So if you run into a gold player, so to speak, if there is one, you know that they've been playing for a while and they've gotten a lot done. So talking about other players, I talked about extractions real quick. So let's talk about those. There's going to be a few extractions within the map. I think like about three, maybe four. But at one point, radiation is going to start spreading and you're going to have to choose an extract to get out. And if that radiation covers it, they're going to tell you to move. Or if you have a gas mask, I believe you can still get out there but chances are you're just gonna wanna go to one that doesn't have radiation. But again, it can get really hectic. Everybody going for the last extraction, especially, there's only one, if you miss it, you're done. You die, you're gonna lose everything that you have. But everybody's trying to get out at the last extraction because now everyone's on crunch time. The whole map collapses in on one helicopter and that helicopter lasts, I wanna say about a minute and a half. So if you call in a helicopter, the extraction zone, if you hop in right away, it takes five seconds to take off. The last one takes about a minute and a half and it counts down all the way. So there is no rushing there. Just clear the area out or talk to somebody and maybe you can leave with them. It's a lot of fun, but that's really where the adrenaline starts pumping. So give DMZ a try. It's a lot of fun. Overall, DMZ is far above Warzone, in my opinion. Now, I don't know if you agree with that, but if you do, please let me know down below. Now they did say it is in beta, so they're open to making it better and taking feedback for it. And with Lupo and Landmark playing, I hope the devs reach out to them to make the game even more exciting. Everything I mentioned in this video can happen. You're in a stronghold, you're fighting a ton of AI, another team comes in, the radiation zone is expanding, and the last extraction you guys gotta get to. So it gets really hectic, and there's situations that happen in this game that are just not gonna happen in Warzone. That's what makes this game mode so much fun. Anything can happen in DMZ. It's not a one track mode. So I'm loving DMZ and I hope you will too after this video. And uh, that's all I got for this one. Hope you enjoy it. Take care. See you on the next one. Peace.